Kevin, Boz has touched on it a little bit, and I'll ask Owen about it, but you, you were one of the guys who was instrumental in getting Indigenous Australia involved. Mm. Well, you weren't instrumental in getting them involved, but recognising that involvement. Um, and yeah, you talked about during time at the G, and, and your, your great player, Michael Long, that, that you had a long association with. Um, how important was that, and how, and, and how did that come about for you? It came about because when, when you got out of your comfort zone where you lived, and went out to see your own country, Australia, you realise there's another Australia up in the north, in the yep. west. And um, so I used to go out there uh, doing a lot of footy clinics and taking kids for um, footy camps and uh, looked nothing like Sydney and Melbourne, hmm. Adelaide or Perth. Couldn't believe it. On the doorstep of Asia and uh, Indonesia and that was 1974 when I took that job on. And I thought, if ever I coach, I'm going to come back in. I'm going to change the landscape a little bit, maybe, if I've got a reasonably good tenure as a coach. Um, so I promised the people in Darwin, if ever I get a coaching job, I'll bring my team back, no matter where I'm coaching. I reckon after six months of coaching Essendon, I got a phone call from Darwin saying, remember the conversation we had? <laughs> so Essendon went back there seven times to play. So we really started to move into... Now, of course, we're going, we're going to come up very soon. I think probably Greater Western Sydney is going to coach, or sorry, we will select the 100th Indigenous player on the AFL lists. Now, that's 100 professional, fully paid athletes who are going to come out of the population of Tasmania. That's an unbelievable figure mm. out of a half a million Indigenous people. That's the same population of Tasmania. That's quite amazing. And, and we're 90, we're 90-odd 90 plus... Gold Coast will pick a few now because they're coming in this year. They get the draft. We get the next draft, so we'll probably pick the hundred, one hundred. So it, it all came about by really we were boring. We were just about us. We couldn't see these talented young native Australian people and what they had to give us. And they had uh, run, speed, vision. Their vision is unbelievable. And uh, we just get the ball, kick it down there, ruck throw in, ball up, boring. But when they got the ball, they saw the whole lot. And when you recruit people to your organisation or your business they, that have talent to see the whole lot, they're the ones who can help your business. And I, I would have to say that they've added the best flavour to our game you could ever have added. Because they run... They take on targets, they stop, they wait, they order a cappuccino, <laughs> and then say, there's the, uh, that's where I'm going. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about the Aboriginals. Okay. Yeah. That, that's a massive over-representation. We talked about over-representation from Australia on a world stage. That's a massive over-representation yeah. from Indigenous Australia. Mm -hmm. Those skill sets that Kevin just described, Mark, that's perfect for football. Can Why do we not see more... Well, Indigenous Australians into football. Completely perfect. And um, when I first come back here two years ago, I had, and uh, I'm so glad that uh, Mr. Sheedy said that because I had the same thoughts. I actually. <laughs> Mr. Sheedy. <laughs> Somebody well, pass me a bow tie, uh, please. <laughs> <laughs> I and called you that the stick. first time I met you at that airport. No, yeah, no, so. No. Um, I, I actually uh, approached the FFA and asked um, to give me not a blank check, I would say, but just, just the support to to do some work or, and to tap into this market. Um, I'm yet, unfortunately, to hear back from them. I know they're a very busy organisation with the World Cup bid and everything, but I think that is a, it's a talent pool. And I've spoken to people from other sports who have actually said the same thing um, that Kevin said. Um, spoken to people in rugby union, cricket, and, even, and especially rugby league, and they've all said the same thing. Go and recruit Indigenous players for your sport because they do have special talents and that can be utilised. So. Um, like I said, the FFA may be busy, but I think this is something that we have got to look into, especially in view of the fact that the majority of this team that we've had, who have done well in 2006, not so well in 2000 team, are going to retire now. Mm. And I think if we're looking to have the World Cup here in 2022, we should be represented um, by the people who, who are native to this land, as long as they're, you know, they're, as they're good enough. There's two things that happen. One, they're getting taller. I don't know what they're reading. Buddy Franklin six foot six, and so is, you know, Paddy Ryder. So they were never six foot six. Mm -hmm. So they're getting taller. In our game, we've just uh, had here at uh, Riverview College uh, a seven foot one Sudanese boy, and uh, he'll get drafted. He'll definitely get drafted. He, 
fall draft him. If no one else will. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'm going to say is that our landscape's going to change. Mm. But the one thing they do like to be able to do is use their hands. Mm. It's just the ball moving through packs, push away here, body off. It's the hands that probably attracts them to it. They don't play cricket. They don't want to play for five days and not get a result, you know what I mean? <laughs> 2020 cricket might be a bit of a deal, you know what I mean? But when you talk to them, no, nah, mate, sorry, no. Nah. What about training? Goal kicking? All they want to do at training is goal kicking. <laughs> Why? Because they, they do their maths and they get a score. I kick 10 goals, 15 at training tonight, I'm happy. Do five laps, don't even think about it, coach. <laughs> Give them a sprint around, you know, and a fight with another mate. They love it. Absolutely love it. So they are different. And you've got to understand that. They are very, very different people. But I've never had an Aboriginal player that I've never really liked. They've all been marvellous young men. Unbelievable. And we'll get ten in Greater Western Sydney, at least. And we'll recruit five players from overseas and probably two or three from America. So I'm very interested in the American uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Melon, what about the rugby union? Uh, oh. Obviously, a, not so much Indigenous, but Pacific Islander, there's a strong yeah, influence mate, there. We've had an influence over the years. We've had the Ella. Oh, of course. Yep. So when I first, yep. I played my uh, club footy down at Randwick, and when I first came in, the Ellas had just left. You had the likes of Lloyd Walker there. Yeah. All the talents that you said, silky hands, fantastic skills. Didn't want to do the long running, happy to do sprints. Uh, you know, Kirtley Beale at the moment playing for the Wallabies, fantastic talent, same thing. All the skills, hand kicking, the same sort of things. So yeah, we, we've had great, represent, great representation. And um, like, like you said, Mark, it's like in South Africa it went to the stage where they had a quota system and they yeah. had to pick yeah. a number of. So you never want to get to that state, no. but if they're the best players in the in the country, then they're going to get picked. So that's all they need to do. So slowly you're getting them. And then you know, as the more get involved, you'll see them more and more.